Изначально этимология праздника Купалы происходит stems from the Proto-Slavic Kup or Kupa, meaning group, together, copulation, connection, coming together. In our language, we have words left that are related to this root, and Kupala derives precisely from it, of course. It is a very ancient deity, as ancient as the life itself. Different traditions depict him differently. The last tradition depicted him as a son of Semargu Svarožić and his beloved Kupalnica. They had two children, twins, Kupalo and Kostrama, divine twins. You can find them in all cultures. It was believed that Apollo and his twin sister Artemis were also born on the day of summer solstice. This day is also the birthday of the Celtic god mek and others. We will discover this born-again god, young god, practically anywhere. It is believed that the Scandinavian god Vidar, or the ancient god Cern, Cernonos as he was further called in the Celtic tradition, that his time of birth also falls precisely on the eve of the summer solstice. All gods who are destined to inherit the future, young gods, born of Mother Earth and the primordial fire, relate precisely to this festivity. They call it Yurilo's Day. They call it Jan's Day. They call it Ligo, Lita. The Finnish language, as strange as it may seem, preserved its true meaning. Summer Yule. And they call it that to this day, and us, the Slavs, we call it after the god Kupala. The festivity was so strong, so loved, that nobody could erase it from tradition. Even in the Ross primary chronicle, so to say the first and ancient officially recognized source to this day, you will find this god nearly cast out medieval style. He is described as a spiteful demon and how people run to the woods despising all rules and norms prescribed to them by the newcomer pastors, meaning that people just did not want to listen, because it was something bigger, it was greater than them. Fire that is born on this day can hardly be perceived using the human mind. It is a very powerful fire. Only all together, as the ancient wolves used to say, you can take it. But in order to do that, you will have to come together. You must forget all conflicts, all fighting, all misunderstandings, because this day is very important for the general unity. The consciousness must be prepared in order to open the proto-foundation love, because only by the power of love one can accept the gift that Kopala is about to give you. So what kind of gift does he give? It is believed to be the proto-foundation good which reveals itself at this time and shapes cults, forms traditions, forms egregorial systems, and in a way it is also true. Via people's lives, egregorial systems collect, so to say, it is a certain big data, the combined experience of all those populations entrusted into their care. They draw certain results from it, such as how people dealt with certain moral norms and rules and other event-driven situations that the egregors designed for them, what sort of conclusions did they draw, what results did they show. All that goes to shape the proto-foundation good. Everything that ended up not working goes into the proto-foundation evil. Thereby, they in some sense balance each other out, these effective and ineffective result-achieving methods. Seems to be like there is nothing terrible about it. However, only if you forget that all these algorithms take shape in a certain egregorial environment, under a certain particular cult, and it is tradition that rules the roost, tradition and not freedom. And thus, 
now having awakened the proto-foundation freedom within us, seriously awakened it, we understand that the proto-foundation good must form itself somewhat differently. This gives us the opportunity to perceive these fires slightly differently than ordinary people who live ordinary lives, who know nothing about paganism. So what kind of fire is it? Only once a year, a fire comes that opens up the proto-foundation good, filling it with the Gregor-free algorithm. These algorithms are very simple, as simple as all paganism. What people should do in order not to battle, but live harmoniously with one another. What people should do in order to not only live harmoniously with one another, but also with the rest of the world, with elemental beings, with leshies, with brownies, with mermaids, with members of other realms. What people should do in order to interact with nature, not as invaders and conquerors, but as good neighbors. And so this algorithm is laid into the proto-foundation good. And it is a spawn of a very ancient fire, a very ancient force that comes to its own rightful reign on Kupala night. But in order for this gift, granted by this force, not to disappear into nowhere, people must take this fire and hold on to it for 40 days. For this, the priests and the wolves have told people what they are to do on this as well as the following day, so that the God's gift doesn't get lost, so that the newly born God would not be diminished in his rights but would take his place at the forefront lead. Because if people lose the gift given by the God, the God would be lost as well, because God himself is this algorithm. God himself is the information that rules all of it. And so we receive this gift on the night of summer solstice, on Kupala night. Very simple, extremely simple algorithm. Because according to the proto-foundation love, one can only accept something that already exists on the inside. I will try to explain it right now. You see, in this world it is forbidden to change nature by force. That would be an insult to the mother. It is an insult to the force. A God that is born, he is born as he is, as well as a man, born as he is. Whether it is bad or good, whether you like it or not, is unimportant. This is how it should be according to nature. Such is the pagan law. All that is created by nature is needed. This means that everything that exists in this world goes harmoniously with the humankind. And it depends only on the man himself, whether he happens to perceive this gift or not. The previous steps, completed in the previous mysteries, have prepared the consciousness for this perception. And the last mystery on Beltane was engineered precisely for that. Awaken the most important, the most precious thing within yourself. You will be able to take this fire if this most important thing of yours has not been restricted by anything. If you didn't lose it throughout these days, these 50 days between Beltane and Kupala, but on the contrary have grown and cultivated the switchy essence within yourself, which will become the only reason for living, that is when this fire will be yours. But this is not enough, because your power may not be enough. This fire is a raging, informationally raging fire. It is too much for one person, and it is necessary that all, all take this algorithm. And this can happen only if it will fit you and every living being next to you. With every blade of grass, with every speck of dust, with every creature, every water nymph, every leche, with all and everyone. 
пробуждается. What quality is it? Доходит до своего пика именно на купалу. It awakens on Beltane and comes to its culmination precisely on Kupal. A state when there are no strangers around, but only your kindred. Next to Kupala bonfires, gather those who you can call your own. We bring offerings to the spirits of places, because they are ours. And these are not sacrifices, no, these are offerings. On this night, we exchange gifts with those who are part of us. We bear offerings to the spirit of places. We bear gifts to our elementals, gifts that we ourselves have prepared for them. And they give us some of their gifts. One of these findings has grown to be a legend. And this is, of course, the fern flower. It is a paradox. Any biologist will tell you that ferns don't bloom. <laughs> but people stubbornly go on a search for a fern flower every year, knowing that it isn't there. But if they go, that means that they are hoping for something. They clarified it later. They said, on this night, the earth reveals its treasures, that we will see swamp lights in the place where the treasure happens to appear. Swamp lights, meaning some other light seeps through, which means that that is where the treasure is buried, close to that. Only the word treasure doesn't imply buried treasure. This light, the impossible light of the fern flower, can be seen only by those who will perceive this fire. So what kind of fire is it that one can perceive by sight but is not existent in nature, in human nature, but it suddenly appears? It is that same consciousness that preserved within itself that most valuable thing, regardless of pastors, regardless of biological knowledge that the ferns don't bloom, regardless of rational understanding that there is no treasure that would suddenly pop out of earth, still someone who stubbornly goes into the woods searching for the fern flower. This someone who knows that anything is possible in this world, that all is connected with everything, and everything is not as it seems, and that a leshi on this night, instead of confusing you on your journey through the woods, could lead you to that place where you will see this fern flower, only if he happens to feel that you are one of his own. And how will he feel that you are one of his own? By a sudden appearance of this necessary, most amazing quality, a certain primordial fire which makes you equal to him and him equal to you, so that he won't see a difference, won't see an intruder in you. And that is when this fire will appear, when the water nymph does not sink your breath, which maidens traditionally send floating down the river on Kupala. When the fire is so fierce that this force will be impossible to tell apart from the strong young God. And that is where the essence lies. That is where the fierceness is. We must awaken the fire element within ourselves and preserve its power as much as possible because a new fire is being born. And if the degree of your inner fire will be similar to it, even if just close to the power of his fire, then you will see the fern flower. And when will that happen? If suddenly you will get that inner feeling of your inseparability from the surrounding environment and from every other person. If all people, all of those who find themselves being next to you on this night would feel the same, then this fire, transformed by the power of love, meaning by the power of connection, according to the most simple quality that links together everything that lives, that same deep inner fire that implies life 
will suddenly appear in everyone. Therefore, for that reason, on this night, throughout the century, it was forbidden to forbid. Taboos did not exist. People could do whatever they wanted. They could love who they wanted, where they wanted, and how they wanted, but only according to love. Committing violence was impossible on this night, and priests strictly warned against it. No violence, no murder, no violation of the free will. Only according to love. Everything you do, you do only according to love. You do only because you desire it, and don't dare forbid others. Understandably, the pastors got infuriated by such traditions, and still, every year, people ran into the woods and loved one another as they chose and were not afraid, breaking all prohibitions, breaking all traditions, and no one had the right to scold them or say any harsh words. And only when there is no ounce of animosity left, when according to this deep feeling of connection that we call love, an acceptance of another as your own self, and this I emphasize, that is possible only when your individual own is revealed, that is when there is no need to hate your own self, that is when there is no need to hate someone else. All of our hatred usually stems from this similar feeling towards certain qualities within our own self. So when there is no more this inner hatred present, that is when love is possible that same love, unconditional love, when we evaluate the one we love, not by the most complicated quality, but by the most simple one. And we spread that same feeling across all elements of the surrounding nature equally as we do with a person. We love leshies and nixies and brownies and everything that surrounds us, and dryads and lars, it is a feeling that is impossible to describe in words. It is a feeling of belonging, a feeling of unity. When we are the same in essence, when the whole world becomes your home, because everything that is in this home is one family. And so this is the state that comes with the birth of the young God, young Kupala. If you assume his likeness, this fire will enter you to a greater degree, and you will receive this algorithm, the algorithm of how to survive going forward. Because Kupala is here with us only for 40 days. He will come of age in this world and leave for darker worlds, to go through his own transformations, his own education, and to return back to us on Nimbolk, with a new wind, a new word. And by transforming this reality to become a new husband to Earth on the next Beltane. But if people don't receive this algorithm of victory that he gives, if they won't hold on to it throughout these 40 days, then the young God will not return. And if he does happen to return, it will be someone whom mother will reject. She will say, it isn't him, it isn't my husband, and will be choosing a different one. And the blame here, of course, is only on those people who washed out, who weren't able to hold on, because there is a very important condition. Everyone must want it. Everyone. Similar as in the Scandinavian tradition, which many are familiar with, which many here are involved in, remember the legend of the god Baldur, but a reverse case scenario. When Baldur died and went to hell, hell brought forth a condition, I will let Baldur return, I will bring back your proto-foundation good to you, return your power, but only if everyone will cry about Baldur. Not everyone cried, and so Baldur did not return. So here we have a reverse story. Everyone must want Kupala. Everyone. As strongly as we wait, 
for a long lost child, a precious relative, an own ancient force that will give us the algorithm with which we could achieve a victory, but only when we are all together. This is why on this festivity we cannot be alone. He is Kupala, which means together, and us too, we must be together. This is why, on the night of summer solstice, you will find an opportunity, despite all bands to come together wherever you are, gather together with like-minded individuals by the Kupala bonfires. That will be the greatest action, because you cannot be alone on this night. Traditionally, on this Kupala night, one had to jump over a bonfire, and people usually jumped in pairs, pairs of people who love one another on this night. And you could not be ashamed of this love, because this feeling that comes from the God, this power, is something that can change everything in your life if you accept it, if you won't be afraid of it. People jumped at the Kupala fire and the cleansing happened that very night. And it was believed that those who went through the Kupala cleansing would not get sick all throughout the year. And that is true. We've led this mystery many times. We had it many different places, in our special places. And we can truly confirm that if you spend a good time jumping over a Kupala fire, you won't sneeze even once throughout the year. But that is not all. The Kupala festivity also overlaps with the so-called mermaid weeks, a time of honoring mermaids, water nymphs. Usually maidens would send their breasts with a burning candle floating down a river, another famous tradition. They watched them flow down the river as to see what sort of fate was meant for them. Will they get married, or maybe sudden deaths await them? Anything was possible, such were the times when child and young deaths were not something uncommon. If someone's wrath sunk, it meant that they would not live. If the wrath floated beyond the horizon, it meant that they would live. This is a tradition is very ancient. It echoes a very ancient archaic ritual back when our predecessors used to make human sacrifices. And in this case, it was a sacrifice to the water spirit. People were very dependent from the spirits of places that they lived in. And it was believed that the mermaids, later this ritual was modified and they sent off not the maiden herself but her wreath, but it was believed that that is how the mermaids choose their victim who was to be sacrificed to them this year, because the mermaids, as the daughters of the river god, could see the future thereby determining who will go and who will stay. The echo of this archaic ritual, it sounds a bit scary, I understand, but you should know the origins of these festivities. It is very ancient, very. And then, after giving wine to fire, after bathing, usually bathing wasn't a single person but a group activity, after honoring the water, the earth, and the tree spirits with offerings, they ran into the woods, searching for Perun's flower or fern flower. And some happen to see a strange glow, flickering, green, yellow, Blue. And it was believed that someone who happens to see this light will get a gift to see and hear the other world, to understand the language of birds and animals, to speak to the spirits, 
to see a Leshi, the mermaid, a Mavka, the Navi, all those who this world is full of, which people, closed off from this reality, can normally not see nor hear. And only someone who was able to awaken the fire of the ancient newly born God within himself can suddenly see this color, the color of a new birth, a birth of the new world. And that is when it all comes together. That is when all four elements come together, unite together, and man stops being a man. Something happens to his consciousness, becomes absolutely magical, absolutely incredible. It is this precise effect that we will attain. What it is to feel your own kindred fire. Because when kindred fires come together, the fires unite. How not to make a mistake? Everyone currently is creating a new reality, and it will become clear, not composed of just yourself alone. Therefore, it is extremely important to be able to recognize your own, so that your reality does not include foreigners who will destroy it belittle it, force it to compromise with other realities, whereas in the new world there will be room for only a mutual agreement and never any compromise. And this is recognition. And that is exactly what the priests spoke of when they led people in the Kupala mystery. They said, you are now one whole. All together, you are a force, whereas apart, you are weak. The Kupala fire can't enter each one of you separately to a degree that it should. You just won't be able to take it in a physical sense. But if you will be all close together with your kindred fires, that is when the Kupala fire will be drawn. The power of the young God will be drawn to you and together with this power will come the true knowledge that will enter the proto-foundation good precisely. That is when a person wakes up in the morning and knows how she could act, what she should do and for what sake. And this knowledge, it can't be removed from one's consciousness. But back then there were certain conditions, only all together. Nowadays, the rules are slightly different. In the new world, everyone has the right to create and to live in that reality that they want, but not in solitude. Certainly, that reality will house those whom you would like to call your own. And this is not always people per se, but there should be a certain common quality according to which you will be uniting your own and which will not include outsiders. And so throughout these coming 40 days until the next festivity, you will have to unmistakably grasp this feeling. And according to this quality, kinder to your own, define what it will be, whom you will be uniting with. What common characteristics should you all share that ultimately creates plurality, making you come together, making you kindred? What should be common between you? Physiology, thoughts, interests, attitude towards the world, your needs, or maybe something else. And so this algorithm of what exactly should be, you will also receive it on this Kupala night. And of course, as a sign, an eruption of inner flame in the Hara center of the body, in the life force center, in the Svathistana chakra, similar to a flash, your own, unmistakable. But there is a condition. This condition was also brought forth by our ancient forefathers. They said, if you want to preserve this fire, if you wish to multiply it, if you want to find Perun's flower, make sure to take the oath. 
first and foremost not to lie not on this night not throughout the next step until the waning air element not to lie not to kill not to spill blood and this is important as well to protect earth that gives you space for life, space for realization of this reality which you will be making according to one true kindred sense. And that is all that is needed. And on this night, it is forbidden to forbid. Remember that. The only night when you can allow yourself anything that is possible and impossible, and there is no concept of sin, there is no concept of incorrectness, inappropriateness, worthlessness, because you will be led by the fire. It is a sense of drive in your etheric body, which can be felt instantaneously, when you have a need to do what's right, to unite with someone, to interact with a person under different conditions than it is dictated by society the societal environment. That is what the people did. And the wolves, those same priests that led this ritual, kept a strict watch so that no one would disturb the process with their moralizing, so that people could find an opportunity to unite with each other and not to fight so that they would find the ability to unite through fire instead of killing each other with it. Usually, any types of conflicts were forbidden during this time, and leaders who chose to go against this rule were greatly in the wrong extremely unwise when starting wars on this day or making blood sacrifices. This is a wrong understanding of the ritual's power and a wrong understanding of the essence of earth magic. And they suffered from it as a result. But we will not think of them. We will think of a reality which each one gets to build for themselves. A reality is built on something, and this something is two forces, energy and information. You have the energy of the elements, and now you also have the information, or rather will have it. Once the Perun's flower comes, you will feel it, you will see it. So, My well wishes to you will be the following. Try finding an opportunity not to be alone tonight. Just try it. It is not without a reason that this mystery, this ritual, always contained a multiple people aspect. Our forefathers knew very well it is easier together. You just need to make sure that this together is understood by you correctly, not together in a sense of with just anyone, but together only with your own. This is a good time to think and to dare and maybe to take the right action in order to realize who is your own in this world, how do you recognize it, according to what aspect and what needs to be done to make sure that your own are always close to you. This is greater than kinship. This is greater than friendship. It is above all that. It is a sense of a clan. It is in the blood. And this must be awakened within, because it is there, it has not disappeared, it is just sleeping in a frozen, completely inactive state, this knowledge, this force.
But on the Kupala night, you get an opportunity to reveal it. Just most importantly, remember not to forbid yourself anything. Don't forbid anything to no one. Don't forbid anything to others. Nobody has that right. Even priests, Volks and Druids of the ancient times, being mages, still went into the woods with everyone else. Together with everyone, they lit the Kupala fires because they knew that this is the way. That is how it should be. People won't survive if there is conflict. They will feel it even greater once the air element starts to wane. That is when full realization comes. But right now, when the power is at its peak, there is no need to fight for it. The coming 40 days you will be at the peak of your activeness, all of you. There is no need to fight for power. There is no such need. What is it that you should fight for? What is it that you should destroy for? Perhaps you should just organize your space somewhat differently. Maybe you need to differently understand the concept of who is yours and who is not, not according to installed algorithms provided by the social realm, but according to something different and much deeper. This is how magical families are created. This is how magical societies are formed, when forces unite. And so for the sake of the unity of these forces, on this Kupala night, try to find your own.